Hey there, and welcome back. Here we are with some more six arc content. Now, those of you that have been around the channel saw me debut this 14 and a half inch upper several months ago and shoot it out to a thousand yards and beyond. Now in the content with this upper, I got a lot of comments around 14 and a half inches, isn't capable of distance, it's not a DMR upper, etc. So I thought that's a great point. Wouldn't it be fun to compare this 14 and a half inch barrel to a longer, say 18 inch, six arc upper. That's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. So if you like the sounds of that, stick around. What you're gonna see in this video is a side-by-side -side comparison of a 14 and a half inch six arc with a Faxon one and eight twist barrel right beside an 18 inch proof carbon fiber barrel with a one and seven twist. So if you like it, stick around, here it comes. We're gonna move into a gear review then we'll move into the shooting portion where you'll see side by side out to a thousand yards or so how each of these uppers perform. And then finally, I'll wrap up at the end with my thoughts and summarize my experience running both of these uppers out to distance. So let's get into it. Let's move into a quick gear review before we fire both of these uppers up. Now I'll start with the upper you've already seen several times on the channel and that's my 14 and a half inch fax and barrel six arc upper. I debuted this earlier this summer, shot it out to a thousand yards and beyond with really great consistency, really impressive what a shorter barrel like this is capable of in a caliber like six arc. So Faxon one and eight twist carbine length barrel. Daniel Defense, Riz three rail, really happy with it. Very comfortable to shoot, locks up really tight, kind of improves on the Riz two that I've used for years. So really wanted to try this and so far I'm really happy with the rail. Obviously you can see it's M-lock, so I can attach an ARCA adapter as well as my bipod adapter for shooting out to distance or off the tripod. Suppressor on this, Surefire 762 SOCOM Mini, knocks the blast down, makes this thing a lot more pleasant to shoot. The actual upper is a BCM with a Faxon bolt carrier group in it. For optics, running the Night Force Attacker F1, four to 16 with a Trimmer 3 reticle. My opinion, this scope, really fits a DMR roll very well. It's not overly large or heavy. It gives you enough magnification to shoot out to distance, which you'll see shortly in this video. Really like this Trimmer 3 or Christmas tree style reticles in general, because I'm able to hold over and correct for windage without having to dial all the time. I find that very handy when shooting out to distance with a DMR setup like this. Now, new to the channel is the 18 inch upper that we're gonna compare it to. So what you're gonna see here is an 18 inch, Proof Research carbon fiber barrel, one and seven and a half twist with a much longer, say, rifle length gas system. Now, I have great expectations for this barrel. You think about what we're comparing here. This fax and barrel is sub $200, and this Proof Research is roughly a $600 barrel. So, not only do we have a length difference here, we also have a very big difference in price point. So, it's going to be really interesting to see how these two barrels stack up in groups at 100 yards and then on steel out to distance. Now the rest of this upper, also a BCM upper with a fax and bolt carrier group. And then I decided to go with a 15 inch Geisley URGI type rail. Wanted to compare this URGI type rail to the Riz 3. So far, I really enjoy them both. This one's a little bit slimmer in the hand, I believe, but they're both doing their job very well. They both seem very sturdy and have allowed me to shoot very well out to distance getting ready for this video. Now the lower we're gonna shoot is my Knight's Armament, SR15 SBR lower. You've seen it several times. It's effective. It's got the Knight's two-stage trigger in it that allows me to shoot really great groups and get out to distance. Now something I'm really excited about is the suppressor that we're running on this rifle. Now this is a Griffin Armament. And moving forward, you're gonna see quite a bit of Griffin Armament showing up on the channel. They actually sent me a handful of suppressors to run so that I could give you a look at their products I could understand what their products have to offer, and so far I'm really, really excited about what I'm seeing. So this is their PSR, this is their 308 or 30 caliber over the barrel can. It's equipped with a dual lock latch, which is really, really handy. So to throw this can on, you actually thread it on, and then once it kind of bottoms out, you use this collar and twist it in to lock it. And this thing is super sturdy lockup. So when you think about a precision can, you don't want that thing moving around. And I really like the over barrel design of this. My first can was actually a Surefire 762 SS, which really goes over the barrel. So I've always been a fan of over the barrel cans. When I had this upper in mind, I wanted to make sure that it had enough space to be able to run this can. And so far, I really love how this thing came together. So it's gonna be fun to see in this video how this PSR can stacks up 
accuracy wise, sound wise, recoil wise, and gas wise. So this thing is supposed to reduce the blowback in the system. It's actually got venting out the front. It's gonna be fun to see how that works. So from there, optics on this upper is the Rhydon 7 Conquer 3 to 18. And much like this Night Force 4 to 16, I feel like this is a great optic for a DMR type roll. That 3 to 18 power is a huge range, really allows you to dial back and get a wide field of view to find your targets or maybe shoot off of unstable positions. And then 18 power allows you to zoom in and make that shot out at distance. We'll probably end up using the full range in this video as we work through it. Now, the last piece will be the ammunition that we're running. So the ammo we're gonna run is Hornady Black 105 BTHP. You've seen me shoot this several times in this upper. It seems to perform very well out to a thousand yards. But the really cool thing about this ammo and this proof research barrel is it's provided by Ally Munitions. Now, Ally Munitions has stepped up. They're a great partner to the channel. And I'd ask when you're looking into your next purchase that you consider Ally Munitions. They've been great to work with, awesome customer service. They've got all kinds of products and they've really helped me grow this channel. So they took a chance on me and I'd ask that when you make your next purchase, keep Ally in mind, check them out. I guarantee they can help you out if you're into long range shooting or long range hunting or hunting in general. They've got all kinds of products and great customer service. So from here, what are we gonna do? We're gonna move into accuracy and velocity to 100 yards so that you can see how these two uppers stack up as a baseline of performance for velocity and accuracy. So I'm gonna move down and give you a review of that. And then we're gonna move out and start shooting steel. I wanna to try to shoot steel from about 300 to 1,000 yards. And what I wanna do in the video is give you a side-by-side -side comparison of drop, give you a view through each of the optics so that you can see what it looks like from the shooter's perspective. And then I'll have a GoPro running on the steel so that you can get an idea of energy on target. So from here, let's start shooting. I'll see you at the end of the video where we'll wrap it up and I'll give you my summary on how these two uppers stack up. Finally, while I'm shooting, drop your comments. Let me know what you're seeing. Let me know what you think. How are these gonna perform out to distance? I'd love to hear it. So let's get into it. First things first, I think everyone's gonna to wanna to know how these two uppers perform at 100 yards. So to get a baseline of performance, I ran both uppers across the chronograph. So as you can see in these clips, I ran five rounds out of the 14 and a half inch upper. And those five rounds averaged 2460 with an SD of roughly 10. So very decent performance, that speed seems about right. What I'm finding with this 14 and a half inch upper is I run multiple lots of that Hornady Black ammunition across the chronograph and through groups. It seems to vary a little bit. I'm getting velocities from 2460 in this example up to like 2520 if you've seen some of my earlier videos. And then for groups at 100 yards with that 14 and a half inch Baxon barrel, I fired 10 rounds. You think about these barrels, you get heat in them through 10 rounds. So I thought it'd be fun to compare the sub $200 Faxon barrel to the roughly $600 proof barrel across 10 rounds to get an idea of how they group. So with the Faxon 14 and a half inch rifle, that group is gonna measure right at two and a half inches total. So 2.5 MOA total across 10 rounds with the bulk of that group measuring about an inch and three quarters. This one, maybe a bit of a flyer could have been me, but ultimately the group overall measures two and a half inches. And uh, that's decent, I feel like for a carbine, that's not quite what I'd wanna see out of a DMR type rifle. But as you'll see in this video, that's gonna shoot out to steel just fine. We're gonna shoot practical size targets in a DMR type roll. So we'll be able to make plenty of hits. Also, it's worth noting, I did bump this over three tenths to get it zeroed. Then the proof, this thing is crazy. So this proof barrel is brand new. I ran five rounds across the chronograph after getting the gas setting set. So these five rounds, I'm probably roughly 10 to 12 rounds in. And as you can see in the clip, the five rounds measured right at 2,600 feet per second with an SD in the range of 10. So very nice performance, quite a speed increase over the 14 and a half inch barrel. And I think we'll see that make a difference down range. Then what's crazy out of this proof is this 10 round group right here. These 10 rounds I fired at the same cadence as the Faxon. And as you can see, these 10 rounds in total measure, I'm gonna call that just over an inch. So just over one MOA, but a one MOA 10 shot group out of an auto loader is really awesome performance. So this right here is not so much an example of a short barrel versus a long barrel. Short barrels are definitely capable of better accuracy, but I think what you're seeing here is the difference in barrel quality. 
So maybe a more affordable barrel option at sub $200 versus a very premium barrel coming in there at about $600. So don't let this fool you. This isn't an indication of barrel length, more so barrel quality. Barrel length is gonna impact the speed and that's where you're seeing that roughly 140 feet per second difference between the two barrels. So from here, let's go ahead and push out and start shooting some steel so we can see how these stack up out at distance. Let's see how we do on steel. First up, the 18 inch proof barrel. Now I've got a couple of targets here at some closer distances. The first one we're gonna shoot is gonna be a 45% IPSC at about 275 yards. And then we have a 10 inch circle out there at 380. So for elevation, this rifle's calling for about a mil at 280 and 1.9 out there at 380. So with that, let's go ahead and see if we can connect. Pack, pack, pack. There's a little bit low and left, or low and right. Now we're calling for 1.9. Pack, pack, and pack. So there's just a little bit off that right edge. I'm actually going to bump my impacts just a little bit to the left. I'm going to come left. Ooh, I'm going to come left three tenths. Not sure what happened there versus the zero that we just shot, but uh, there's no wind out here, so I'm going to make that adjustment before we push out further. Now the 14 and a half inch on the same targets. 280 calls for 1.2 mils. 380 is calling for 2.2. So a little bit of a difference that we're already seeing at these closer distances. Back, back, back. Elevation wise, those look pretty good. Let's go find our other target. 2.2. Back. And we went off the right edge or hit the T post. Back. Oh, nope. In fact, put one more. In fact, so elevation wise, those look pretty good. Those are also pushing a little bit off to the right. So maybe there's a little bit of wind, but it really shouldn't be impacting either one of these rifles. Let's go ahead and push out further and see how we can connect it to further distances. We'll push back on a two-thirds Zipsic, 635 yards with a 14 and a half inch barrel. Now, after shooting those rounds with the closer target, I did bump this scope left two tenths as well, based on what I saw on the closer targets. Now, with that, we're calling for 5.8 mils to get out there on this two-thirds Zipsic. So I'm just going to hold that over, see if we can connect. In fact. left edge back 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 Ooh, that was an impact impact so call it 5.8 5.9 mils and we're making repeated hits next up the 18 inch barrel I ran down and painted that target and swapped to the 18 inch upper. Now this one is calling for like 4.9 mils of elevation to get out there. When I painted the target, I noticed the 14 and a half inch impacts were all pretty low. So realistically, it probably needed 5.9 to six mils of elevation to get out there. So we're gonna be about a mil flatter, I believe, if we start making some impacts out here. So wind feels super calm, kind of from my back. I'm gonna go with this first round. Five mils, dead center. Impact dead center. The right edge. Impact. Kind of low. So let's go up to like 5.2. That glanced off, must have glanced off that left edge. Back. 
that. Impact. Impact. So we're 5.2 mils of elevation, which is just shy of a mil flatter than the 14 and a half inch. Call it 0 0.8, 0 0.9 mils flatter. And we were making plenty of hits out there on that two third zip stick. So great shooting, let's push further. Very acceptable performance out of both uppers. That's a 635 yards. With that, we're gonna push out on a full size zip stick at 1,035. Now, based on the drop that I saw at 635 out of both uppers, I went in and trued up my BC. With that, 1,035 is calling for 12.7 out of this 18 inch upper. So I'll dial that on. And windage wise, man, it feels super calm. My wind flag down there is still. Let's just go dead on. Actually, there's a little bit of left. Let me go half to the left. Okay, so that landed. Call it one mil to the left. Impact. 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 Try double tap. Not sure what happened with that first round. Try it again. Back, and back. So that's pretty fun. Now let's swap over to the 14 and a half inch upper, see how it does. Next up is the 14 and a half inch at 1,035 yards. As I mentioned, I trued up my BC on this as well, and it's calling for 14.7 mils of elevation. So I'm gonna go ahead and dial that on. And according to my shooter app, my ballistic is going subsonic, just a little bit, about 950, so a little bit short of where we're shooting. So when it transitions into that subsonic range, we're gonna lose some stability, but maybe we can make some impact. So. I'm gonna start by holding that same one mil left. Okay, so that went just over the head, it looked like. So I'm gonna bring that down three tenths. I'm gonna increase my wind hold two tenths to 1.2. This scope's at 13 power, the other was at like 18. So that just went over the shoulder, over that right shoulder. Let's bring it down another three tenths. We'll go to 1.3 on the wind. Pack. Pack. The left edge. Back to one point two. Impact. Back to one. Off the right edge. I'm gonna try a double tap at 1.2. I think we only got one. Let's try one more. That's all we got for ammo. And that went off the right edge. So as far as a comparison, 
I would say we were at 14.1 mils of elevation. And we made a decent number of hits out there with this 14 and a half inch. From here, we'll wrap up and I'll give you my thoughts on running these two uppers side by side. So that's gonna wrap up the shooting portion of the video. From here, you gotta let me know in the comments down below, what did you think about the performance out of each of these uppers? Did they meet your expectations, exceed or fall short? I'd love to hear it. I'd love to chat with you about it. Now, while you're doing that, I'm gonna move into my thoughts on running each of these uppers side by side out to a thousand yards. Now, first up, we move down to 100 to get a baseline on velocity and accuracy. And straight up, accuracy-wise, I was a little bit disappointed in what we got out of the 14 and a half inch upper. I've seen this thing do better. You saw in video, I put 10 rounds into about two and a half inches, which for a fighting carbine would be fine. But you think about a DMR roll, myself, I'm looking for 1.5 MOA or better. Now, ultimately in this video, we were shooting fairly generous targets, so I made plenty of hits. It wasn't a big deal. But I'm wondering maybe if I need to clean this thing, or I'm wondering if maybe there's some variation in the different Hornady lots. Because the other thing I noticed, velocity-wise, this was running 2460. And I've seen this exact same Hornady ammo run about 2520 to 2530 previously. So I don't know, maybe, maybe this upper just didn't like this lot of ammunition. Maybe I need to start hand-loading for it. Maybe I need to clean the barrel. I don't know that I've even cleaned this thing since starting to shoot it earlier this summer. But ultimately, it is what it is, 2460, two and a half MOA. At 100 yards, I was super impressed with this 18 inch proof setup. Velocity wise, that extra three and a half inches got us another 140 feet per second, which we saw make a real difference out of distance. And accuracy wise, this thing did awesome. Brand new barrel out of the box, basically laid down a 10 round, one MOA group at 100 yards. You think about a 10 round group, there's shooter fatigue in that, there's heat, there's variations in the ammunition. There's all kinds of things that could blow a 10 round group. And this thing had no problem, one MOA. Really impressed with that. Very easy to lay that down. And I think we saw that trend continue as we started to shoot out to distance. Velocity wise, both of these did SDs in that 10 range, which is very acceptable when shooting out to distance. So in my opinion, very good performance out of the proof, acceptable performance out of the 14 and a half inch, but ultimately we were able to make plenty of hits. With that, we moved down and started to shoot steel. First up, we had a target at 280, and then a target at 380 yards. And right out of the gate, we saw a difference in drop. So even at those closer targets, we saw a 0.3 mil, or roughly one MOA advantage, to the longer proof barrel. And then we had plenty of hits, so accuracy-wise, I was very happy with what we saw. From there, we pushed out on a two-thirds Zipsic at 636 yards, and we saw the advantage grow even more in the favor of the 18 inch barrel. If I remember right, this 18 inch barrel shot about 0.8 to 0.9 mils flatter out there at 636 yards. Windage seemed to be about the same. What I remember, we were pretty much holding on the plate to make those impacts. And again, we had plenty of impacts. We were over 50% hit, so no problem connecting with a very practical target there at decent distance. From there, we pushed on out to a full size Ipsic at 1,035 yards. Now, unfortunately, at 1,035 yards, the Tacticam on this uh, Night Force, it quit working. I don't know if the battery went dead. I don't know if it failed again. I've already had several failures on these Tacticams. I'm gonna have to charge it up and see if it'll run again, but I don't know if that footage is gonna play for you, and if it doesn't, I apologize for that. The Tacticam just straight up quit working. We saw plenty of hits, both of these uppers. I wasn't really counting, but I know they both went 50% or better on hit percentages. But what we saw out there at 1,035 is an even bigger advantage to the 18 inch barrel. So out there at 1,035, that 18 inch barrel ran about 1.3 to 1.4 mils flatter. And you think about what a mil is at 1,000 yards, that's 36 inches. So we're at about roughly 50 inches flatter drop out of the 18 inch barrel. Windage wise, Wind seemed to be pretty consistent. As a shooter, I really didn't notice a difference. They both seemed to be one to 1.2 mils to the left to connect on that full size Ipsic. So ultimately, from a hit percentage standpoint, I'm happy with both. They both were able to connect. But you think about what this longer barrel got us in this video. So more velocity is a flatter shooting bullet. Now, why does that matter? Flatter shooting means more margin of error the further out you get. So say that target at 1,000 yards is 30 inches tall. You think about that bullet coming in flatter, there's more margin of error than a bullet that's really dropping out of the sky. So for a slower velocity, that bullet is dropping really fast, so you have to get your distance perfect. You have to know your BC and your drop perfectly 
to be able to connect, say with a first round or on multiple impacts. The other thing I noticed in the shooter app is after correcting the BC on both of these, this upper was actually going subsonic in the 950 yard range while this one was supersonic out to about a thousand. Why is that important? Many times when a bullet transitions to the subsonic uh, flight, it starts to become un unstable and that's when your accuracy kind of goes out the window. So the longer barrel, more velocity means more margin of error at distance and means the bullet stays supersonic further, which extends your effective range, basically. Now as a shooter, I really couldn't tell a difference in energy on target. You'll have to let me know what you saw in the GoPro footage, but with regards to how the plates reacted or how the bullet splashed in the dirt, it looked the same to me. I couldn't notice a noticeable difference between either of the uppers. Now I did notice a little bit of a difference in shooting the uppers. So I believe the longer gas system on the 18 inch barrel actually was a little bit smoother. And then you think about this Griffin can that's kind of a reduced blowback design. I think this was a little bit more of an enjoyable shooting experience versus the 14 and a half inch. Yes, they're both running adjustable gas blocks, but you think about the can on this, this is a very small can, low volume, there's no venting out the front, so I'm using the adjustable gas block to try to restrict that gas flow. And this carbine length is a little bit sharper. I don't know if that'll show up in the footage, but as a shooter, it's something I felt. I felt like I was able to make follow-up shots with this 18 inch barrel a little bit easier. And I think you saw that in the intro when we double tapped that thousand yard target. So in summary, if you're gonna be shooting out to distance, say 600 yards and beyond frequently, and you can sacrifice a little bit of maneuverability, then yes, the longer barrel is going to be an advantage. If you're looking for a package that's compact, maneuverable, a little bit lighter weight, then a 14 and a half inch barrel, as you saw here, is gonna be very effective. It's gonna make plenty of hits out to 600, 800 yards, and it's gonna give you a package that you can move around, no problem. You think about maybe shooting uh, two gun matches or even some of the closer in PRS type matches off barricades or the DMR type matches, this would be a very effective package. But I would say if I was gonna be shooting maybe 600 to 800 at max is where I would run this 14 and a half inch. Sure, I've shot it out to a thousand yards and beyond, but that's not really what it excels at. That's where a longer barrel is going to be an advantage for you. And then finally, this Griffin can. This is my first round through the Griffin so far. I'm really, really happy with it, actually. I really like how this thing locks up. I like this dual lock. So you tighten it down and then you just move the collar into one of the grooves that it fits in and that thing stays secure. There was no movement. I fired, I don't know how many rounds I put through this upper, maybe 60 to 80 rounds through this upper. In this video, getting ready for it, getting zeroed, tuning the gas block, just making sure the upper was gonna run. So no problems with the can coming loose. As a shooter, it seems like this upper is putting less gas back in my face and it's a little bit smoother. So really happy with the Griffin can so far. You're gonna be seeing this in future content. You're gonna be seeing this upper actually as it sits right now in a lot of future content. I'm really happy with how this performs. So from here, if you made it this far, I appreciate you sticking around. Thanks for watching. I'd ask that you help me grow this channel. I've seen a ton of growth recently and it's your interaction that's gonna help me keep growing. So if you like this, like the video, comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Share with your friends. And then finally, the best way to help me grow is subscribe so you're in line for my future content. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram in Mountains Mullets America. It's a great place for us to interact, chat about what I'm working on, and I can give you a sneak peek around new videos that are coming. So finally, thanks for watching. Hope you'll stick around and join me in my next video. We've got a ton of really cool things going on, and I want you to be there to share it with me.